Hi, everyone. Good evening. We're just going to wait a couple more seconds to let more people in before we begin tonight. That's me in that picture, Julia. Nice. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> Okay, let's begin. Good evening, everyone. My name is Julia Wong. I am the Director of Marketing for Wild Women Expeditions. And before we start, I'd just like to acknowledge that as a Canadian company, we're thankful for the opportunity to create, collaborate, play, and work on the lands that we are known today as Canada. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territories of the Inuit, Métis, and First Nations people that this land is home. So good evening, everyone. Um, just a couple of housekeeping. First of all, welcome to our webinar tonight about the Into the Northwest Passage. Um, we have a chat box in the Q&A for any questions that may come up. Please feel free to enter your questions in the box. And if your question pertains to a topic that we are currently discussing, we'll call on that question um, and hopefully get that answered. If not, at the end of the session, we have a formal Q&A and we'll go through all the questions there. Any questions that we don't get to, we will definitely respond back to you as soon as we can, hopefully by tomorrow. This session is being recorded, so anyone who needs to drop off and or um, wasn't un unable to attend can rewatch the webinar at their leisure and we'll send out that link tomorrow. Okay, so let's get started. Can everyone see my screen? Okay, so tonight our panelists, we have Megan Bailey, Director of Sales at Wild Women Expeditions, Franny Bergschneider, who is our Global Program and Operations Manager, also at Wild Women. We have Brenna Green, who is our Junior Sales Lead at Adventure Canada, and we have Marissa Dalatalis, who is our Polar Expert. Hello. Hi, all. Hey. <laughs> I'm going to pass this off to Megan. Cool. Thanks, Julia. Um... First of all, I just want to point out this picture. It I was very confused when I saw it on the ship, but it's a fog bow. It's so cool, like a rainbow, but with fog. I took about <laughs> a thousand photos of it because it was so unique and special. Um, cool. Before we dive into the itinerary and the details of what happens on board and on land, um, I just wanted to do a quick introduction to Wild Women Expeditions. I know some of you know us very well and have been on many trips with us and some of you are brand new. So I just wanted to say a huge welcome to everyone. Um, it might be obvious, but I feel like it's always worth repeating, but we are proud to be a women-owned, woman, -owned, woman, woman founded, woman owned and women led business for over 30 years. We offer trips on all seven continents and we are focused on creating amazing experiences in wild spaces shared with this incredible community of women. Uh, so we have women joining us from all different walks of life, people traveling solo with a friend, with a partner. And for us, the most magical part of our trips is sharing the experience with this community. We've seen people become lifelong friends and travel partners um, over the years, and they'll travel together time and again. And for us, one of the most rewarding parts of the job is hearing about women overcoming challenges and literally climbing mountains and jumping into Arctic waters and the ability to share it with you, our community. Um, everywhere that we run trips around the world, we find local guides and companies to partner with who align with our ethos of sustainability, caring about the planet, caring about the communities that we visit, um, and especially supporting women in those communities. And that ethos is why we've partnered with our friends at Adventure Canada for our trips in the Arctic. So they are experts in the region. They've been running adventures for over 30 years, just like us. Um, and the trips that they operate are not just a fun and amazing adventure, although they are that, but it's also a great educational experience where we have the opportunity to learn about Indigenous cultures, uh, Arctic wildlife, the effect of climate change in the North. Um, and they work very closely with the Inuit communities, both on board and while we're visiting the communities on land. So we'll get more into that a little bit down the line. Um, so if you have traveled with us on land-based trips, um, you will find that being on a ship works a little bit differently. Um, on the ship, we are a group within a group. 
Um, so we get questions quite a bit about what the difference is between booking directly with Adventure Canada versus booking with Wild Women Expedition. So we just wanted to touch on that a bit. Um, so basically how it works is at the beginning of the season, we work really closely with our friends at Adventure Canada and we'll hold a bunch of cabins and uh, we've got all different categories. So if you decide you want to have um, a window or a porthole, if you prefer twin beds or a double bed, or if you're willing to share, or if you want your own room. Um, so we hold on to those and then we fill them with you, our community of travelers. So from day one, you know that you have a built-in community to share the experiences with. So we often have people, Adventure Canada often has people joining, traveling solo on their own, which is great. Um, but you do miss that group experience from day one. You're kind of on your own in the dining room, you know, reading your book, maybe leaning over, chatting with the couple next to you. Um, whereas in Traveling with Wild Women, we have that built-in group right away, right off the bat. You have somebody to lean over to at dinner and say, oh my gosh, can you believe we saw that today? Did you get a good picture of the polar bear? That was so cool. And be able to have those conversations and it's just bonding right off the bat without, um, without having to make your way around the ship and see who you connect with. Um, another question we get, which I'm just gonna touch on here is, is it more expensive than booking directly with Adventure Canada. And it's not, it's all the same. We are very close friends. We have Brenda here from Adventure Canada. We're close friends with them. We talk to them all the time. If they have a early booking bonus on, we have an early booking bonus on. So um, it's the same price and you just get a few extra features um, and the community of women to join. So some of those features are, um, we'll have a wild women reception where you can meet and chat with everybody. We'll have reserved dining tables uh, in the dining room, um, which are usually having so much fun that the rest of the ship are all very jealous of at dining periods. Um, and so again, it gives you that chance to debrief and catch up with everybody at the end of the day. Um, we'll also have our own Zodiac departure. So wherever possible, we'll get a little bit more into detail around how this works, but these Zodiacs are how you get from the ship to the shore. Um, and the rest of the ship kind of come down in random groupings or depending on what kind of hike you're interested in doing that day. But uh, wherever possible for us, we'll have our whole group of wild women out on these trips, again, sharing that experience and exploring the landings together. And if you're lucky, you might have Marissa or Brennan driving your Zodiac because they're awesome Zodiac drivers too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we also include our hosts like these beautiful faces. Uh, this is uh, Dipna and Kira. Um, so Adventure Canada provide guides, they provide bear guards, they've got onboard educators, they've got geologists and archaeologists and historians um, who are amazing and facilitate all kinds of learning opportunities. And we add our wild woman host to facilitate our group. So she's the one that's making sure that everyone has what they need, arranging uh, arranging the table at dinner, maybe inviting special guests to dinner. Um, she'll be organizing private reception. She might organize private yoga lessons. Uh, and she's your point of contact to make sure that things are all going as smoothly as can be. Um, so, you know, we've had people that uh, fall ill on board. She's making sure you get meals in your room. Uh, she'll be your cheerleader if you need to, a little extra push to get up that hill. Uh, she might be encouraging people to do the polar plunge and jump into the Arctic Ocean. Um, but she's there to sort of support everyone and make sure things are operating smoothly. Um, but the best thing about booking with wild women, and I think it goes without saying, but it's the opportunity to meet you, our community. And that is what makes these shared experiences so special. Uh, so we invite all of you to join us and come with an open heart and be prepared for adventure. And honestly, our trips, our groups have the best time and come away with memories to last a lifetime and amazing new friends to share it with. Mm -hmm. That's all very, very true, Megan. I've traveled with quite a few wild women and those are some of my favorite trips. So I highly recommend that you go with wild women. So I'm just going to do a brief overview here of the Into the Northwest Passage Expedition and a little bit about Adventure Canada. So Megan touched on it a little bit. We have been operating since 1987 and we started entering Arctic waters in the 1990s. So it's been about 30 years that we've been up there. 
Uh, we operate on the Ocean Endeavor, which is a 137 meter long expedition vessel that's ice class and takes a maximum of 198 passengers on board. We are the only Canadian expedition company that's operating in Canadian waters. So fellow Canadians, we invite you to come and join us. And this trip in particular, our Into the Northwest Passage expedition is running from August 27th until September 12th. So it is a 17 day expedition. And it starts in Kangalushuak, Greenland, and it ends in Kugluktuk, which is in Nunavut. And we do provide charter flights for these trips. We don't expect you to find your way into Kangalushuak or in, out of Kugluktuk. So we will take care of that uh, charter flight. So the trip actually begins in Toronto, and that's where we'll board the charter flight. It's only our passengers that are on board. We'll make our way up to Kangalushuak. That's where we'll board the vessel. And then at the end of the trip from Kugluktuk, we will fly you again on a charter flight with just our guests and we'll end in Yellowknife there. And then you'll make your independent arrangements um, to head home out of Yellowknife there. So this trip, the, the main theme of this trip, the Into the Northwest Passage, the reason why we do it is we're trying to mimic the route of the early explorers, the explorers of the 1800s, and in particular, the fabled uh, Franklin expedition that went through this route, trying to find that Northwest Passage. So there's some highlights on this expedition, like Alulasat, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that Marissa is going to talk a little bit about later in the presentation and show you some pictures of the incredible ice that's there. Uh, but the other highlights are crossing over the Davis Strait. I don't know if any of you have been to Antarctica and done the Drake Passage before. Um, this is an interesting comparison. It's a much calmer body of water, um, but it is kind of a, um, you know, a, a point for people to cross those two bodies of water. Once we do cross over, so we're heading westward on this trip. So we're heading um, into the passage. So we're heading towards Mitmatalik or otherwise known as Pond Inlet. And that's a Canadian Inuit community that we'll head into. We'll head up towards Devon Island, which is surrounded by Talarutsiapamanga, which is a marine protected area. Um, that's where we'll be searching for lots of wildlife, the big Arctic five. And then we'll head up to Beachy Island. I'll talk about that in just a second. And then we'll come through the passage and um, we may hit some other Inuit communities in Canada throughout that region. We'll be making stops every day on this trip as we make our way over to Kukwakta. So the really important thing to remember with expedition travel is that this is our intended route, what I've just shown you. That was our intended route. So what you see here is the actual route that Megan and myself and Marissa was there as well that we did, um, I don't know, ladies, that was a month ago. Time is a warp. I think that was about a month ago now that we are on the ship and we were doing that exact expedition into the Northwest Passage. And this is the actual route uh, that's been plotted by our expedition team that we took. So it's important to remember that with expedition travel, there's ice, there's wildlife, there's lots of things to take in con into consideration. So as much as we intend to make all of those stops, your route might change. Each trip with expedition travel is different and that's what makes it unique. It's not your cookie cutter tour where you're pulling into the same port on every trip and having that same experience as the trip before you. It's very unique and, and tailored to, to that trip and whatever challenges or maybe surprises that you might come along um, on that trip. For example, we might see um, a really incredible sighting of walrus that we want to slow the vessel down for and, and we'll make that detour because we know how important that sighting is for people. So we have that ability with our ship to slow down and, and take advantage of the opportunities that come our way. So like I said, history is a huge component of this trip. A lot of people who book this expedition are here for that explorer history. Uh, they want to make their way into the passage. We do have another trip that comes out, but that's doing the reverse. This one is actually taking the route that the explorers would have taken um, to find that missing link in the Northwest Passage. So this is a photo here of Beachy Island, and this is kind of the creme de la creme of, um, of explorer history in the Northwest Passage. So if you're familiar with the Franklin expeditions, if you're not, I highly recommend you. Google it, check out one of Ken McGugan's books. Um, there's lots of, lots of writing on the Franklin expeditions. 
but this here is the grave site of three of Franklin's men, which was an expedition ship that went through in the 18, uh, late 40s, I believe it was. And three of his men from that failed expedition um, are buried here along with one other gentleman who was on the, um, one of the rescue missions who went out um, actually looking for him. So this is one of those huge highlights and, and one of those big reasons for why people come on this trip is for that uh, history element of the explorers. And they'll have historians on site sharing that story. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the incredible part of our team, which we'll touch mm -hmm. on a bit later as well. We'll go into more depth, but you will have people with really specific knowledge on this trip. So at Beachy Island, you might have Ken McGugan there. I believe he's actually confirmed for, for 2024. Who's an author who's written several books about the Franklin expeditions and really broken them down. So um, very interesting to get interpretation you know, right from the source there. Um, so this picture here, this is one of the stops that we made on that expedition that we took a, a, about a month ago on into the Northwest Passage. And this wasn't an intended stop. This was somewhere that we ended up going uh, because of a detour that we needed to make. And it was an incredible stop. And this is why we really encourage people to have open minds about making those detours, because that's kind of what actually makes the trip is those unique moments, those aha moments. Um, and, and like I said, it just makes it not that cookie cutter style. You really do feel on our trips like you are exploring, you're finding new places. Um, I believe we found new sites that other ships had not been in several times. I think it was like four or five different landings that we had on that trip this year where other ships just not, had not been. Um, and we get you to those wild, wild landscapes where you can really connect with, connect with nature. And that's the, the ultimate purpose of these trips. And it's fun for the expedition team too, because, you know, because we're pivoting at the last minute or last moment, they'll take a handful of us and we'll go out on a scout on a Zodiac and we're like looking for landings. We're looking at if there's, you know, safe from polar bears. It's like super, super exciting. So if you're an early bird, you're watching all this unfold from the yeah. side of the ship. And, and yeah, so yeah, again, it's part of the expedition, part of the adventure for sure. Yeah. Oh, well, speaking of adventures and Zodiacs, um, oh, here we are. I believe this is at Alulusat. And um, like you'll see us, uh, what's that? Looks like it with the yeah. ginormous oh, ice. Gigantic yeah. Yeah. icebergs here. And um, yeah, so for, as um, was mentioned, we'll be riding in the Zodiacs. And again, you might have me or Brenna or another lovely lady uh, be your driver. Um, and you'll see um, see those blue jackets I should have mentioned, or maybe someone did, you will be provided a jacket. So we'll all um, be little uh, blue Smurfs all together. And, um, but yeah, we'll be riding these Zodiacs and you're prepared for anything and everything. So it's always great. You can see some people have their cameras ready because wildlife uh, can happen at any time. And so when you're on these Zodiacs, it'll be a mode of transportation from ship to shore, but it'll also be uh, as part of uh, an activity and an excursion on a Zodiac cruise. So for example, here at Alulusat, we are cruising along um, between icebergs, keeping a safe distance, of course, and more than one occasion, um, you'll see humpback whales here. Okay. And here is another example of a Zodiac cruise. We're going around icebergs. We're, we're likely going around, this might even be Dundas Harbor. And we're look, look, you can already see the geology. And there's looks like a glacier in the background there. It is absolutely stunning. And, and if we're along on Zodiac cruises, so that's when you might have 10 to 15 Zodiacs in line or paired up we'll actually oftentimes have a geologist give a little pseudo lecture through our uh, radios for everyone to hear so that we're all um, bearing witness and learning about what we're actually seeing. Like for example, this is likely 2 billion year old rock and what kind of rock. And it's, it's such an amazing experience for um, educational on so many levels. Okay, and oh, here we go. Here's uh, the bay in Alulisat. So this, what's amazing about Alulisat, we keep mentioning this because really it is the Greenland ice cap. 
it is the only place or the big the biggest place where the it's moving from the Greenland ice cap out to the ocean. And a story has it word on the street is that even the, the big iceberg from the Titanic came from here. So this all comes down and it breaks off calves and it's actually a moving, touching experience to witness. So I always listen for it, watch for it. Um, but this is a viewpoint where you'll be visiting the city. So again, we'll be visiting communities, including Alulisat here. And you walk up to the Ice Fjord Center. So you get this viewpoint and it's just mind blowing at how massive it is. Like it, this whole experience is just um, puts life into perspective for sure, because you'll see this from uh, one side at the front of the um, icebergs and the glaciers. And then you'll see it from the other side from within the bay. And if you're on the kayaking team, you'll see it uh, from the water. And here we are also again at the top of Lulisat having a great time. And let's see, what else do we have? Oh, okay, here is more amazing ice. Uh, this is a glacier from Croker Bay. And so depending on conditions, um, just so you know, I'm also a kayak guide and we've taken groups out along here. And, but if it's not, if it's a little too rough for kayaking, we will have Zodiac cruises. And if it's too rough for all of that, we'll have the ship cruise. So um, it is such an amazing experience because, you, and you'll, you'll listen to the glaciologist talk about, um, for example, you'll see nice shades of blue here. You'll learn so much about ice glaciers and um, how it retreats, why it retreats and uh, moraines and everything. So again, you'll see the layering in the rock in the back. It's just, uh, a great experience and then the captain is also a key player in in our expeditions in in terms of um where he takes us and how he turns us around so that's always a fun experience as well what else do we have here ah we have so when we visit the communities and part of um our canadian history canadian arctic is uh, the Inuit culture and the people and the land. Um, we are so fortunate to have this as part of, I don't wanna say excursion, it's just part of the experience because you're gonna learn all about their history, what they've gone through and um, how their the reconciliation and moving forward and how innovative uh, they are. Um, you'll learn, uh, the, the dances, the drumming, the throat singing, because in, in some of the Inuit communities you'll visit, there'll be a performance. So you'll see all of that. And some of you will be able to participate in all of that, super fun. And um, see, for example, you'll see some drumming uh, that Alika Hammond, I think there's another shot of her later too. She is, um, there she is on the left. She is Greenland's first female prime minister and she joined us on this trip. She's a good friend of Adventure Canada's. Again, they've done a great job in nurturing all these uh, friendships and relationships. And then you see Louie there on the right. She is running some workshop there on um, uh, rope and string games. So you'll, you'll, and she does beading and well, speaking of beading and shopping. Uh, so when we visit some of the communities here, you'll be able to support these communities and also take home a great um, piece of art. Here's just a couple here. I don't know if you can see them. So these are my beaded earrings mm. from the Arctic there, uh, as well as I have some Greenland. So you'll, you'll be able to meet and watch them work. Some of the artists, whether they're carving, whether they are beading or they might be, you'll be able to see, oh, this is Kiviet. This is super, super warm um, from muskox. So um, with every community visit, they'll always give a, a little rundown prior to, as to um, you know what to expect, what you can see. Um, and you might even, most of the time you'll see some, you'll experience some country food, which is the local foods that, um, they eat and they'll share it with you. Um, but yeah, so um, 
and they'll tell you where you can shop for certain items as well. So, and plus you can always ask us. <laughs> and yeah, this is an example here. This is in Sissimute, quaint, beautiful little town in Greenland. Oh, and this is Mary. So this is Mary, she's 93 years old. Here she's talking about how they're, you know, cleaning and with their Arctic char. Um, yeah, they are, and this is in, uh, Joe Haven, Haven. So, yeah. pardon me? Joe Haven, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, this is in Joe Haven. Again, a, a great community there. Lots of um, things happening in the area. Um, but yeah, she was really warm hearted and just so excited to meet everyone and, and showcase and show what she's doing and sharing um, her experience and big, big smiles. 93 years old. <laughs> Oh, and that's our team. Uh, this is our expedition team. We are, uh, this was actually near the end. So you can see how happy we were. Actually, we're taking that shot and the, the ship just shifted and we we're all having a good time. So, um, but yeah, we are a fun loving bunch. We wear very many hats um, in terms of, you know, you might be um, listening to a lecture from a professor and he or she might also be driving the Zodiac for you. So, um, and they've been doing it for years. I'm just really fortunate to be part of the team these last couple of years. And uh, it's, we are, it's a big family and we welcome you to be part of that family because you'll just see how, like, that's the beauty of these small ship expedition cruises. Um, it is quite intimate and you'll get to know everyone by name, practically. And uh, we're all there to support you and make sure you have a good time because we like to have a good time too. Let's see there. Oh, speaking of expedition, this is Amanda. She's one of the geologists there. I believe this might even be on Beachy. So she'll handpick or, you know, any at any location, um, handpick certain rocks and she'll, uh, she'll, I think these are fossils there too. And she'll give the story of uh, where it came from. And then you can touch them yourself. And some of them uh, might even be 4 billion years old. I'm not kidding. So it is amazing. It's totally mind blowing. And, oh, and then wildlife. Again, no guarantees on the wildlife. But here you'll see a variety. This is a sled dog likely on Greenland. You'll see humpback whales. Again, we always keep a safe distance. Yes, walrus, like this is incredible. We saw a pod of 30, I believe, over 30. And a little baby one. You see polar bears. And, and the thing with polar bears, so we have, um, just because we are there to protect you, you want we want you to be safe, we do have bear guards. So we do scout the areas before we land. Um, and sometimes just like, um, Brenna mentioned earlier, there are times where we might have to pivot because there's a polar bear there and we don't want to displace him or her. So we are looking for a plan B or plan C. So, but if we're able to, and it's a safe distance, we can do Zodiac cruises, um, and, or the ship will, uh, go alongside within a certain distance. And I myself, like I had an amazing experience going through this one bay and it was renowned for um, polar bears and belugas, but we had a nice surprise and I actually saw narwhal like it was I couldn't believe it. It's like unicorn of the sea. So we all could. I didn't have a photo because I was too busy driving I had to pay attention. <laughs> but yeah, it was very, very cool experience. And you'll see polar bears with their cubs too at the time, depending on the time of the season. Oh, some of the other, okay, so those were off, uh, off ship activities. We actually have, we do have some onboard programming as well. And here we've got Dipna and we've got a yoga class here up top, beautiful daylight. And so what we'll want to do with, uh, what we'll do with Wild Women is having um, your own private, well, we do our best given the, the conditions, but our um, private sessions. So it could be your own yoga class. Um, so there'll be morning and different times of the day. We we'll squeeze it in. We'll also provide, oh, here, that's me. Um, so other workshops include, um, this is me doing an iPhone, how to use your iPhone to take photos. And I 
quick tips on that, but there's lots of other workshops there, uh, including the presentations by the professors and lecturers, but like there's knot tying, there's um, watercolors from the artists, uh, there is um, games, like you'll learn how to drum even, like if, uh, and they'll have some sample drums, so you can learn how to do that, even throat singing, such a variety. Because usually there's some might be some C days as well. So um, we'll fill it in with lots of programming. And you saw a glimpse there, that's kayaking. So if you haven't thought about it, please do. It is such a serene, magical experience to kayak and be that close in the Arctic waters. And you can dip your hands where the whales are, where the, you know, like it is, it is really magical. And I, and I know I do, and I'm pretty sure most of the other kayakers do as well. And even when we're on a Zodiac, we can do this too, where we'll just have a mindful moment and it's all silent. We put our cameras away, hands down, take a deep breath, relax, so that we're really being in the moment, taking in all the details. So we'll just remember this moment and this our surroundings and what we see, feel, and hear with the, the sun, the wind, the breeze, and, and the cool waters it's it's really magical and I think the next side shows us going towards this big huge I know it, it's so hard to fathom how huge some of these icebergs are but uh yeah think about it we've got kayaking happening in the arctic great experience and polar plunge so it is um, like I haven't missed one. I can, I don't know how many trips I've been on quite a few, but I, I always think, oh, I've done, I don't, but I know I'll regret it if I don't. And if you, that's actually Brenna there jumping in. <laughs> yeah. Like how many, you know, cause actually on one of these, maybe even this one here, um, just minutes before we, we saw more than one humpback whales. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. And it's like, well, whatever happens, happens, right. You only live once. So, yeah, but uh, it's super fun, super safe. You are tethered in case you're wondering and uh, just, you know, safety first, but um, we all have a good, good time, all fun. And let's see. And speaking of fun, we have evening activities too, including live music and some dancing. You can see us, uh, we've got a tickle trunk, all, all sorts of different hats and and uh, clothing, disco nights. So yes, we, we have fun from morning till wee hours. Uh, I don't know how we do that, but we do it almost every night, but there are movie nights. So we have some <laughs> times. And you know what? I think an important thing to pop in here is about dress code. We're super oh. casual on board. So we've got yeah. like Viking hats and stuff happening here in the dance room. You don't have to wear that to dinner, but we don't have a formal dress code on the ocean endeavor. It's very, very casual. Uh, we do have the captain's welcome and the captain's farewell. And those are nights where people like sometimes get a little bit dressier. If you did bring something nice, like those are the nights to wear it. But in general, it's very family, um, homey feel on board for clothing. Yeah, that's true. And, and plus, you always want to be ready to jump outside because you'll listen for announcements whale spotted 12 o'clock of the bow or like so you want to be ready and have proper clothing proper footwear so that you're not slipping I mean the decks are fine but you know you want to be warm enough to head outside um and let's see oh we have more evening entertainment here so here we have a group of wild women showcasing their dramatic expertise and this looks like a um, Northern light scene. So, I mean, it's all fun. We all work together. <laughs> like, like, who, like, I love it. It's great. And then a couple of times too, on um, some of the variety nights, we'll have um, our group create a song and, or a, a poem and, and we can all act it out or read it out together and, or just, um, change lyrics to a song and, and perform it. So anything goes, we all have fun and, um, and we're just friends for life after experiencing something like this, right? <laughs> for us, I like that we call it a variety show and not a talent show. Oh yeah, 
there's no requirement that we have talent to perform. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. (laughs) This, the talent is the being as um, open and just having fun. There's no perfect and you don't have to be on pitch. And if you stutter, I stutter, you know, it's, yeah, it's just about having fun and um, supporting and cheering everyone on. Hey. Hello. Um, and so we have a very exciting um, promotion for you guys if you have attended, um, which if you're watching this, you've attended the webinar. Um, and it's only for people who have watched this webinar. It's 30% off the Northwest Passage in 2025. Um, excuse me, not 2025, 2024. Um, so if you um, wanted to go on the Northwest Passage in 2024, we have 30% off for if for you if you've watched the webinar. And that is by November 8th, 2023 is the date to book that by. Uh, we also have some other exciting expeditions uh, on sale right now. And um, those are the ones that you can see on the screen. So it's Greenland and Arctic Canada, and that's from August 2nd to 15th. Um, And the little itinerary is just there. So it's Southern, um, uh, it's high Arctic up near, up in, up near Beach Island, Baffin Island, and across to Ilulisat and uh, Kangaroo Swack in Greenland. And we also have Heart of the Arctic um, for 25% off. And this is a really wonderful trip. It's a more of a cultural trip as well as a nature-based trip. And we go to lots of um, communities in Iqaluit, Kimarut, uh, which is a, a community that doesn't get very many visitors, super remote, and Kingate, which is previously known as Cape Dorset. So the, the um, artistic or artist capital of the Arctic just there and then you go down to Ungava Bay and across to Greenland and then we also have Greenland and Wild Labrador uh, in the fall from September 28th to October 12th and that's a really wonderful trip as well starting in Greenland and going uh, south to Nuuk and then across to Labrador the Torn Gap Mountains and then you'll make your way south to St. John's so some exciting offers there for you to think about and that's uh, until November 25th, 2023rd, that, that offer of 25% off. And since we were talking about the North, we, we thought we'd get a little bit bipolar here and uh, mention our trips in the South as well. Uh, we have two Antarctic trips on offer for you for a little bit of a discount. So we have our uh, Epic trip, which is um, next year in November. November 4th to 23rd, 2024. And that goes to the Falkland Islands, South Georgia and Antarctica. Uh, so if you wanted to see those um, those islands, the Falkland Islands is known for albatross and South Georgia has those massive colonies of king penguins. And this time of year is my favorite time of year. It has um, some of the um, densest wildlife on offer there, all the... Um, the elephant seal wieners are are there at this time of the year. And uh, you'll see large male fur seals here as well. And then we also have this other exciting trip crossing the circle uh, in February. And that's also in the height of the whale season. So that will be a great trip as well. And that's 20% off. And that's until November 30th that you have that, that offer. Those are amazing trips in Antarctica for sure. I think on one of those trips, we saw over 200 fin whales just like feeding. It was crazy. And of course, the king penguins, yeah. <laughs> and you might get to see Marissa or Franny in the on this and the Antarctica ship as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we have the opportunity to open up the question field for anyone who does have any questions for the panelists or any questions about the trip itself. Um, feel free to put your questions into the Q&A uh, chat box and we'll see what we can help answer. 
I wanted to mention just quickly that Marissa touched on the beautiful um, jackets that we were all wearing and just a reminder that you do get to keep those. So that can help with your packing needs, um, which I know we get questions about as well, but if you bring some good layers to wear underneath it, that's a really nice waterproof outer jacket. That then yeah, that's a good point, Megan. So we also provide rubber boots as well. So you don't need to worry about bringing rubber boots and those are on loan. So you'll leave those at the end of the trip. But that's for stepping off of the zodiacs into the water and things like that. So you don't need to, you know, clog up your your suitcase with a pair of muck boots. We mm -hmm. provide those. Mm -hmm. So our first question um, is: Will the special discounts reflect on the site when booking? The early booking discounts for next year are on, but the extra special 30% off just for joining this webinar or watching the recording of this webinar is not reflected on the site. So um, just give us an email or give us a call and we will just um, adjust that final price of your, of your booking. Another question is, how is the C at that time of year and place? Um, hmm. They, this, um, guest often does experience seasickness. Hmm. Yeah, seasickness is a really common concern when coming on board, especially if it's your first time on a ship. So a couple of things that I tell people is, well, to start at this time of year, it's not known for being rough waters. It's it's a relatively calm time of year, but you can't guarantee anything. You don't know what's going to happen there. There can always be weather systems that are coming through there. With that said, when you're inside of the passage, it is pretty calm most of the time um, because it is so protected there. In the Davis Strait, you could potentially see some uh, swell if there is a weather system going through, but there's been, I would say more times than not that I've gone through that body wa of water, which is probably 19 or 20 times that I've gone through the Davis Strait or more than that because you come through it twice sometimes, so maybe 40 times. Um, majority of those times it's been calm for me but you can't guarantee if there's going to be weather systems but what I like to tell people with that said is Ocean Endeavor is an extremely steady ship she's very heavy and she's an ice class so she was she was built for rough weather and she has two stabilizers on board as well so that really helps keep the boat steady if there is any type of swell um, we don't have the notorious water that the Drake has uh, we're really not known for that up in the Canadian Arctic if you are concerned about seasickness, I always tell people stay on the lower decks when you're booking your cabin. So when you're contacting wild women, just let them know, you know, I'm a little bit freaked out by seasickness. I experience seasickness. Um, I would like to be on decks four or deck five. That's when you're, that's the lowest um, decks that we have passenger cabins on. And that's where you're going to be the most steady. And you might also want to ask to be midship. That can also relieve a little bit of that, that movement. And then we have a doctor on board, we have a medic on board, um, and I, I just encourage people to bring medications if you think that you might be, might experience seasickness. And then if all else fails, like I said, we do have a fantastic doctor on board. Awesome. Uh, is there gear provided for kayaking? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I was going to be smart alecky, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there, there is. So you are provided a dry suit. Uh, some neoprene booties, um, pogies, so that uh, those are like um, neoprene gloves that are can be um, velcroed onto your paddle and super super warm. You and then we give you um, then you would because it's a dry suit you would layer underneath um, with your marina wool or technical gear, no cotton, please. And um, yeah, obviously a PFD uh, as well. So you're you'll be safe that way and just so you know too with the kayaking um program there is a zodiac with you at all times to provide assistance when and if needed so you're totally safe um and worth it for sure marissa can you talk a little bit about how experienced you have to be to do kayaking on these trips Oh yeah, um, it's open for beginners. The, you're in tandem kayaks, great question, thanks. Um, tandem kayak, so it's a two person kayak, which means it is super stable. It's wide and stable and um, really, you really don't need any experience. As long as you can swim uh, and you're comfortable in deep water should anything happen. But like I said, we go through all of the safety with you um, but yes, um, and you are wearing a PFD. So again, 
uh, but so far so good. I want to knock on wood somewhere. <laughs> so it's great. But yeah, no, it's uh, we've had many people um, where they've only paddled flat water, for example, or canoed or, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's great too. Um, and then you don't have to worry about if you're not paddling with someone, we'll pair you up. So that's, it's all good. It's all fun and fine. And, and, um, we adjust our foot pegs for you and yeah, we're, we're there to help you along the way. And, uh, again, we'll have mindful moments on the water. Awesome. Brenna, I think this question is more for you. If one is living in Icalia, does one still have to go to Toronto to fly back up north or is there flexibility with that? So just to clarify, this question is someone is living in Iqaluit, Nunavut, yeah. and they're wondering if they, okay. Oh, that's yeah. a tricky question. Mm. That's, that's very unique. Um, what I would say to that is it's not impossible to pick up the boat in Iqaluit if you are already living there, it would be a bit of a hassle to have to come down to Toronto to have us fly you back up to your home to get on our ship. But with that said, I can't guarantee what the weather will be like for our ship getting into a Callaway. So this is this is the risk. I'm sure with you living in a Callaway, you know that that body of water in that channel often fills up with ice. So if ever we were coming into a Callaway, I assume you're looking at the heart of the Arctic trip if, if you're asking this question. So that trip starting in Iqaluit, our ship needs to actually make it into that body of water in order to pick up our guests who have come in on the charter flight there. If our ship can't get in because the ice is too thick, then we would reroute to a nearby community and our charter flight would meet us there to get on the ship at that alternate location. So unfortunately, you would have to find a way to meet us in that alternate location if you weren't part of our charter flight. So while it's not impossible, it's it's risky. It's risky. There is a risk associated with that because we can't guarantee that the ship will make it into a Callaway. That's a tricky one. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for that. I see Suzanne has her hand up. So I'm going to just, oh, and I think she lowered her hand. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think those are all the questions that we have. I don't see any more coming through at this time. So I just wanted to say thank you everyone for attending. I hope you found this informative. Oh, Suzanne's up, up again. I'm going to see if I can allow her to talk. Go for it, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Hey, Vivi. Let's see, Noreen. I've asked her to unmute. So if she does get her microphone going. Mm. Oh, okay. She's typed it in. Oh, okay. someone else has typed in a question. Uh, will there be other meetings for other adventures? This was very helpful. That's great. Julie, you can speak to that. We are having <laughs> webinars <laughs> coming up. So I do plan the webinars. We have done webinars in the past, for example, for Greenland and Wild Labrador. Um, we have done other webinars for, I believe, Heart of... Um, Greenland and Arctic Canada, and I think Brenna was on that too. So they have, we have a couple that have been recorded and we do actually have another one planned uh, in a week's time on October 25th to talk about um, the roundup of 2024 Arctic adventures and then a sneak peek about our 2025 Arctic launches that we will be um, excited to announce soon. <laughs> We have a couple new trips that we really are excited to talk about, um, so stay tuned. But um, if you want to look up some other webinars that we have um, done about the Arctic, you can go to our YouTube page, um, and they're all listed under our webinar section, so you can watch those as well. And it's not just polar trips or Arctic trips. We've got webinars on all kinds of destinations that we travel to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Before we go, I'll just remind people that if you have questions or you're thinking about booking or you want to know anything, just be sure to call us or email us at adventure at wildwomenexpeditions.com and we'll be sure to help you find the perfect adventure. Yeah, and then join the Facebook group because then lots of uh, info and you can see people will share their uh, post photos of their trip while on trip so you can see what's happening there. Um, yeah, great resource there. And with that, I think uh, we'll end tonight's session. I just want to thank all the panelists tonight for sharing their amazing insight into uh, 
this beautiful trip and I'm kind of excited. I'm <laughs> kind of really want to go right now. Um, mm-hmm. I hope you all found some inspiration. And uh, if you have any more questions, please feel free to contact us. Otherwise, have a great night. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye, you. Bye, guys.